following show is a paid program. for Saturday Night Live, author, director, and producer. Hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm doing really good. How are you, Cam? Man, I'm telling you, I'm so excited today. Eight <laughs> years with Saturday Night Live. How did we get started in comedy? I started my freshman year in college. I went to University of Houston, and... I always wanted to be, I think even by the time I was 15, I knew I wanted to be a comedian. And it was, uh, I saw a Showtime special and they had all these comedians on it. And the host goes, yeah, this might look easy, but these are the Babe Ruth and the Henry Aarons of comedy. And I was watching at home and I'm such a cocky kid. I went, hey, I could be Ty Cobb. This is a nice deal. And so Eve, like 16, I had an older brother who loved comedy and I just became obsessed with it. When I was 18, I started doing it and I was my first year in college. Wow. That is good. University of Houston. Shout out to them. Eight years with Saturday Night Live. How did we land Saturday? We love Saturday Night Live. Yeah, it was, it's, it's the ultimate. I mean, it's the ultimate goal you want. And yeah. it was so, and for like the first three weeks there, I'm all intimidated and scared. Yeah. I'm this kid from Houston or whatever. And then nice. I meet everybody and there's a guy from Kentucky, another guy from like Iowa. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Uh -huh. I can do this. These, uh -huh. these people weren't born into this job. Right. So it was, yeah, no, it was, it's the ultimate job. How do you get comedy. the call for Saturday Night Live? What do they do? How do you get that? that I sent in packets. Uh, so I write sketches and I had sent in, I think, two years before. Right. And it was, I was looking, I worked on a show. Uh, and then I applied to The Tonight Show with Jay Leno and... <laughs> Saturday Night Live, and I didn't hear anything back from Saturday Night Live, but I got the Jay Leno show. Wow. And so while I was at Leno, I would write sketches for Saturday Night Live, and I mean, I would just practice writing sketches. Uh -huh. And so when I left Leno, I submitted to Saturday Night Live, and I got it. So it was a big deal. It was, I got a call. I was at the gym. And my wife called me at the gym and uh, goes, yeah, this is a Saturday Night Live called. And so this was like two o'clock in the afternoon. I flew out that night at 11 <laughs> on the red eye, landed, and then I had an interview the next day. And they liked me. I didn't do anything too weird <laughs> where they said, eh, this guy, don't bring this guy in. I was calm enough. And uh, it worked out. It was really cool. It, w it was amazing. Well, look, let me tell you something. Before we jump to Saturday Night Live, one of the one, one, one of the viewers said, wait a minute, did he say Jay Leno? <laughs> 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 Forget Saturday Night Live. How did you land the job at Jay Leno? <laughs> well, then, no, but I had jobs before that. My first job, I started writing in 91 yes and that's just when comedy central had started and cable was blowing up so uh -huh. there were a lot of opportunities right and i got on this show called comics only with uh, -huh. uh paul provenza was a host and it was just a really good gig and everyone there who was writing on it were really established writers mm -hmm. and they were all in the writers guild and this show wasn't a Writers Guild show, so I wasn't in the Guild yet. 
and they would get offered shows and they couldn't do them because they were non-union shows. So from that one show, I started working for MTV on a gig. I would work on all these little shows. And then eventually I got in Living Color. That was my first big gig. Ooh, in Living Color. And that was fun. And just think about all the people from In Living Color now. You know, your Jennifer Lopez. I call him Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> yeah, Jim Carrey. Yeah, no. <laughs> Fire Marshal Bill. Jamie Foxx. Yes. Yeah, no, it was the biggest yes. names. It's stunning. It's stunning how many people. And that was the thing when I started, people would go, so do you hang out with the Fly Girls? Do you ever? They came and filmed on a different day. Right. Never. I saw them once in the hallway when we passed, but yeah. they were. Because we would, they would film all their stuff on a Wednesday, and then we would do the sketches on f Thursday and Friday, and that's when they would bring in an audience. So, yeah, people, that was the first question everyone asked, all yeah. my friends, all my guy friends. Uh, hey, man, how about the Fly Girls? Never saw them. <laughs> I passed Absolutely. them in a hallway. But can you believe just the impact that In Living Color did, you know, from what you did as far as the writing? just in living color in itself and now to look at them today man well also they changed the super bowl super bowl format right because in the old days they would have like a marching band from usc at halftime mm -hmm. and everyone was prisoners <laughs> and then you had to wait till they finished and then you could start the football game again and then in living color did a special Hey, we're doing a show during halftime and we'll put a clock in the corner to tell you when the second half starts. Mm -hmm. And it was such a monster success that they started having to get good people to play the Super Bowl halftime show. Yes. And that's why that's why you have all these amazing Rolling Stones, uh Janet Jackson, Bruce right. Springsteen, everybody because in living color forced their hands. Right. Because they would still be doing crap if they didn't if they, if they didn't have to put on good people they wouldn't right can you believe the magnitude of just in living color and what it did what you guys as writers did just the concept the the movement that you did at the time it, it, yeah it was it was stunning it was prime time which they didn't do that they don't do right. sketch comedy prime time it was you got to see people of color. Yes. <laughs> you don't see that a lot. Of, no, yeah, especially you don't. Then you You're didn't right. see a lot. Absolutely. So yeah, no, and Living Color was amazing. It mm -hmm. was it 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 changed television. It it really did. And the unfortunate part is I don't think the Waitons got their due. I don't think they've gotten it. You know, like the accolades of the awards and all of these things. Yeah, and I mean Damon Damon had the most success as an actor comedian yeah and but no keenan changed television yeah yeah, yeah he yeah. really hasn't got his props now that you right. mention it yeah you that's know, like true. the awards you know that he should have i felt like he should have gotten for those things you know yeah no totally agree wow look at that and looking at just your jay leno part and just going forward you mentioned something pivotal that a lot of people don't know and understand is union Let's explain that part, the union part. Okay, so the union saves you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, they fought, like, uh, here's the thing, they're still fighting, but when cable TV started, they didn't pay, re they didn't pay residuals very much if right. it was on cable, because it was the beginning of cable, and then they go, hey, we're not making any money, we can't pay the same fees. And then they agreed, and then Cable started making money, and then they're still like going, hey, we had an agreement. Right. We weren't going to get charged for this. And so unions have, uh, they, boy, they they look out for you, and they uh -huh. protect you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, no, the Writers Guild is a good union. Hey, my cat's here. Um, <laughs> it's, no, the so you join the Writers Guild, and it's really, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that were are, are in or want to go into comedy or want to go into writing because over 40 million people are unemployed, as we see. 
because of COVID yeah. and other things that have happened, but they still have that dream, you know, of maybe doing something that they've always wanted to do and probably purpose to do. What thoughts or what would you give to them? What would you tell them at this point? Well, I would say uh, with the way you can make videos at home and edit, and it's so much, it's on another level than it was mm -hmm. when I was uh, a boy. When I was a young man, I would, uh, you, you, you couldn't, you had to borrow someone's camera. I mean, everybody's got it on their phone now. You could film the quality of a phone. The camera on a phone is 10 times better than a good video camera when I, in the late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you want to make comedy, uh, it's it's easier to do, but it's also more spread out, and you and you can be discovered, and it's hard to I don't know how you become a influencer or anything yeah. like that, but it's it's a ava it's available, like you can do it from Houston easier than you could when I first started. Absolutely, let's do this. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back with Mr. T. Sean Shannon. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. The Cam Hill Show. If you'd like to advertise your business or become a sponsor, contact the Cam Hill Show at gmail.com. I'm a part of the prenatal care club now, taking all my STD tests. Did you know your doctors required bylaw to test you three times for syphilis and HIV? Yes, my husband and I are making sure I get all three tests. Oh, good. Testing is the key to preventing congenital syphilis. And good prenatal care is your first labor of love. Glad to hear your husband is so involved. Thank you. Yes, taking all my STD tests for syphilis is important to both of us. My prenatal promise is to prevent a stillbirth or miscarriage. To find out more, visit myprenatalpromise.com. This pandemic has impacted the lives of many people living with underlying health conditions, such as asthma and diabetes. That's why avoiding COVID-19 is a top priority, and a vaccine will help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Please keep masking up and practicing social distancing to protect those close to you. And be ready to take your best shot when a vaccine is available. Protect yourself to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Amazing things for you. Move up at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $3.19 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $3.99 a month. Both for 39 month lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 0.9% APR for 72 months plus bonus cash. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac.com. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, family, thanks so much for coming back. Mr. T. Sean Shannon. Hey, guy, we have a little bit we're talking about. You have six comedy books that you I do written. have six comedy books. Yeah, you have this some is on the side. Uh, so yeah, no, so I did these, there was an old comedy writer who I can tell you who he wrote for and you wouldn't even know who he wrote for. That's how <laughs> old he was, but it was this guy, Jack Douglas, and he was brilliant and he wrote this book called My Brother Was an Only Child mm. and it was from 1959 and it just inspired me so much. I found it. I used to go to used bookstores when I would travel doing stand-up, mm -hmm. I would, uh, you would have to kill your days. And one of my things I would do, I would go to used bookstores and go in the comedy section and find old comedy books. And I found his and it inspired me to no end. And it was so brilliant. And like on one of the, he got them, and, and in the late 50s, early 60s, sometimes when they publish books, 
pages would get stuck together where they would be stuck and he did it on purpose and when you pushed it open to look in between the pages it just said nosy inside the middle of the book and i thought that was the most brilliant thing i'd ever seen in my life uh-huh. and it inspired me to write these books and he gave them out as christmas gifts mm-hmm. and that so it's kind of how it started and i wrote all these books my first one i have here it's called public displays of infection <laughs> so let me see yeah like Not that infection but infection infection <laughs> yes and so, and it was just a little like, what do we have here? Oh, here's a good one. And this tells you when it was born. This was a, uh, G, it's a TV pilot. It's called Bethlehem 90210. <laughs> so it's a parody of Jesus in high school. Right. And so, plot lines. Homecoming dance, AD 18. Jesus won't change the punch into wine. The gang turns on him and elect Barabbas as homecoming king. So it was all a bunch of religious jokes about uh, teenage Jesus. I love that. And you I got grew up, another one. Oh, I've got, okay, here's the last one I did. This was Unre- Unreliable Narrator. Uh-huh. And there's Wolfman Lincoln up here mm-hmm. and uh, different people. Here's another one, Big Business. Yeah. It's a guy hopping a globe. I don't know if you can see that very well. How am I doing? Like that? There like that? Maybe? Yeah, we can that's see that's it. That's a guy yeah. hopping a globe. There you go. Here's another one. This is called Cough It Up, and it's a <laughs> clown on a toilet. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> so that's what those are, and they just, and it's different. I do cartoons in them and different stuff. And this is a way, this is a way, you know, to like, it was stuff that didn't work in stand up, and it wasn't a complete sketch. Yeah. And so it was just another outlet because I'm, I try to be very creative. I paint a lot. Yeah. I, I make music. I do all these different, just for the creative urge uh-huh. for my own id, I guess. But, um, uh, and that's what I'm, these are a manifest of that. These books are just stuff that I've created that didn't fit into other my my other venues. Well, I tell you what, you've got a great one. You have a feature film that's out on Amazon Prime Herald. Let's talk about that. Okay, so it started. I wish I had the picture with me, but at one of my family reunions, uh-huh. most of my family on my side goes bald. I have all my hair though. So you can see, I still have my <laughs> so hair. They, so they want your hair Those are plugs. <laughs> That's my real hair. That's your hair. <laughs> so my brother got my nephew who was 11 and shaved his head into male pattern baldness. Mm-hmm. And he looks so funny. And just based on this picture of a 12 year old kid with male pattern baldness, I came up with this movie idea Mm -hmm. and uh, I wrote a script and Lauren Michaels who runs Saturday night live, loved the script. and was trying to get traction for it. And I did a short film for Saturday night live called the adventures of Harold. Mm -hmm. And it's just about a kid who's 12 who has male pattern baldness. And so from that, the script, around fun time it was on this thing called the blacklist where it was the best hundred screenplays that haven't been made yet Mm -hmm. and it was on that for two years and then luckily it was kuba goody jr found it and he said i would be in this movie and just off getting him as to be one of the stars of the movie he uh it we got the money it was uh and it's amazing. And then, you know, here's the weird part. It's a low budget film. It cost a million dollars. Wow. That's not low budget to me, but to Hollywood, that is super low budget. We're in Houston. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a million dollars. A million dollars. <laughs> yeah. But I got I got people from Saturday Night Live to be at Colin Quinn, Chris Parnell, Rachel Dratch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ali Sheedy was in it. She plays the mom. And the kid who plays Harold uh-huh. 
is just his, his name is Spencer Breslin, and his sister is Abigail Breslin. They're a big kid acting family, or uh-huh. were now they're on their twenties. Right. And he was so brilliant in the film. Mm. It was amazing. Wow. wow. And. And it's on Amazon so, Prime right now. It, it's on Amazon Prime. It's a really good film. I would. I saw it for the first time in about ten years. I hadn't <laughs> seen it in so long, and we watched it the other night. Right. I showed it to my daughter. I have a twelve-year-old daughter, and she she dug it. Uh huh. She and, did. She uh, said, "Dad, you yeah, like that?" Liked it. <laughs> yeah. No, she's jaded. She doesn't. She's not that impressed that Dad did anything. <laughs> And I've used her and stuff. When she was a baby, I made a thing for HBO called Space Baby, which uh-huh. was a sketch on uh, Funny or Die for HBO. And she was in it as a baby and couldn't talk. So that was just brilliant. That's too funny. Does she Has she seen herself as a baby yeah. in it? Yeah, she's yeah, she's still too cool for school. She's oh, right. Okay, at, yeah. She's 13. I forgot. She turned oh, 13. Oh, she's a teenager. She's, she's grown now. She, yeah. She, yeah. She's, she's not 12. She's not teenager. a baby. Yeah, she's a grown lady. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about comedy in itself is 10%, but there's a 90% of business. A lot of people lose that part of the business side, and they lose a lot of the income. What would you tell them about the business side of comedy? What thoughts? Dude, it's... It's so hard, and it's yeah. and and the goal pull the goal goal line is always moving. It's always yeah. changing, mm-hmm. and you got it. You got to get Instagram followers. You got to get these. And I'm to the point where I had enough credits and stuff that I'm lazy about that stuff. Yeah. But if you're starting out, that's the heart of it. That's yeah. That's exactly. And then and so like there's people who bust it through with that. And once once someone busts through in a certain way, the business always reacts in a way to mine that, but also to kind of patch that hole up. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, it's yeah. like um, it. We'll go back to Keenan. So Keenan Ivory Wayne's and Robert Townsend, uh-huh. which I'm sure you know yeah. Townsend, Robert Townsend, brilliant. He made this short. He made the film uh, Hollywood Shuffle. I think mm-hmm. it was called. Yeah. And he, and it was this, and that was his breakthrough. And it was a Keenan breakthrough for both of them. And then once they did that, once they broke through, people started trying to make short films and Hollywood immediately went over and patched that up, got a couple more people through. And then right. that was, so it's always evolving. So you always got to be on the cutting edge and you have to go the route that's been, but you know, innovative innovation, they reward. Absolutely. I, I remember a long time ago, open mics were real popular, but with COVID, you know, has kind of, you know, that's put it down, not going anywhere. A lot of places have closed up and maybe they're opening up now. What would you tell, uh, you know, your, your up and coming comics, what do they need to do now? Because well, they, you they need- can't go to that open mic and they can't go and practice and see others like they should. I guess they have to go on the internet now and kind of, you know, yeah, I mean, well, you can grow that way, and especially with TikTok and all the formats, right? You could you could study that and figure out how to turn it into what you do, right? And you and it's always you got to serve your voice. Yeah. I mean, one of the big things is like you 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 got to work hard, but you you develop who you are, where you're, where people can't steal you, right? They could, they might be able to take a joke or two from you. Yeah. But if you, no one can be you better than you. That's it. That's the key. You're and, right, Tishon. And I would say, that's I it. would say that's a giant key of your persona, whether it, uh, I would, I, mine is just an exaggeration of myself. It's mm-hmm. like a little exaggeration of what, who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's, to me, that's best work. But if you get a persona, whether it's Rodney Dangerfield, no respect or whatever, if you get your character persona, it's that's a big key I would work on developing your voice. Mm-hmm. Always be writing, always be looking at what's coming up next. Be it TikTok, TikTok mm-hmm. exploded before that. It was Vines, and 
Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, th- I think the internet, especially during COVID, now we're coming out of COVID, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. So I think you can get back. Nothing replaces stage time, though. The right. more you get up in front of people, and it, it's the more you become comfortable and the more you become you. So, yeah. I mean, those are the big keys. But definitely with internet and stuff, and and then also shorter is always better. Uh-huh. <laughs> the yeah. quicker brevity, especially when you're starting. Right. People aren't going to give you 10 minutes. Give Absolutely. them a two-minute really good video, and then they'll go, what else does this guy have? Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, that I would be the, a big thing. I absolutely. I love the fact that you invest in yourself. You and your brother have a new business that's out. Let's talk about it. Okay. It's called, I love the name, Greatest Training Ever. <laughs> yeah. So, it, or it's training people about cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. And I've done one other. I did one series before. And the first one, I'm obsessed with bears, people in bear suits. I'm obsessed with that. And so we did a thing where it was, you didn't, you didn't want to, you don't, I don't, how do I put this? You don't want to shame people when you're right. teaching people, you don't want to shame. So, and people didn't know or don't know, still don't know a lot about computer, computer security. Right. So we had the leading one was. It would be an office and it's eight workers and there's one guy dressed in a bear suit, but he's wearing a suit and tie too. And anytime there was a mistake on the computer, it was because of him. Uh It would be like, okay, these passwords are too easy. Whose password is honey? And then you'd see the bear go, "Mm." right. Then, okay, well, this is what you need to learn. And so that was the first series. And the second one is like a news it's it's like a short news uh, clip, and it would be like, happy birthday to Rutherford B. Hayes. And if he was alive today, I bet he would ask, why do I have to change my password every 30 days? Mm-hmm. I'm sure he'd have other questions like, cars? We have cars? Airplanes can fly? <laughs> and then eventually he would get to, why do I have to change my password every 30 days? And then they, they give a couple lists of why you should. And so I'm doing that with him and it's, it's, I live right across the street from my brother. That's why I moved back to Texas because, uh, the house across from him was available <laughs> and he go, what are we going to wait till we're 70 to hang out with each other? Right. And I went, yeah, that's a good point. So I've been here for five years, right across the street, wow. hanging out with my brother, which is that, wonderful. That is good. That's good. We didn't talk about you being originally from Pasadena. Pasadena, <laughs> Tech, I was born in Pasadena, right at South Houston, right? I was a stone's throw from Pasadena, right? but uh, <laughs> but I did have, I played Little League at this place called OFA, and it was part of the Petre, uh, Petrotex Petroleum Plant. They actually built a Little League field inside that, that bordered up to the Petroleum Plant. I cannot plant. believe that. Yeah, That's I don't... Crazy. Yeah, but yeah, no, Pasadena, baby. (laughs) I love it. I love it. And looking at it, what do you think, what have you learned along the way? Um... Uh, I don't know if I have any anything profound. But like, <laughs> let's me, narrow it. Yeah. Let's narrow it down. What have I learned along the way? Uh, You've learned some. From, and let me just put it in this context: What have you learned along the way in getting your jobs, from Jay Leno to Saturday Night Live to going into films, from going to what things have you learned along the way in that aspect? Okay, here here's a big one. Uh, an agent can help you. It yeah. can't it for you you yeah. still have to hustle most of my gigs i got through word of mouth where like a friend would be working at a show or knew somebody at that show and go you should think of this guy so making having a network is a big deal mm-hmm. which is hard i think for comedians because comedian especially stand-ups who are like lone wolves right and it's very uh Stand-ups are a very peculiar bunch, uh, and I'm one of them, but very, very, uh, I don't know, lone wolves. So, but you got to have a network, and 
that would be, but like agents aren't going to make your career. Yeah. You know, they can help it, but you got to hustle. You got to make stuff happen. They're not going out of their way to, uh, Hey, I'm going to really help this guy. No, I've got 40 guys. Right. I get 20 of them work. I get a good living, you know? Yeah. So I, th I think they want you to succeed, but they're not going to kill themselves yeah. to make it happen for you. So I, you, you, it is self-sufficient. You got to be a hustler. You got to make that stuff happen. And you know what? Another thing, I think if this is what you really love, like people always, uh, well, yeah, but do you really, is there a great way to make a living? You know what? Any job you go into, mm -hmm. there's going to be the same hurdles, the same turds you work with who are keeping you down, no matter what it is, whether you're selling cars or whatever. So you might as well go do something you want to do if it's going to be the same politics everywhere. Absolutely. So that would be one thing I would think too. And I'll always be creating, always be writing, always perfect your craft, no Sounds matter what it is. Sounds good. Let's do this. We'll take a break and we'll be right back with the Cam Hill Show. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. The Cam Hill Show. If you'd like to advertise your business or become a sponsor, contact the Cam Hill Show at gmail.com. I'm a part of the prenatal care club now, taking all my STD tests. Did you know your doctors require bylaw to test you three times for syphilis and HIV? Yes, my husband and I are making sure I get all three tests. Oh, good. Testing is the key to preventing congenital syphilis. And good prenatal care is your first labor of love. Glad to hear your husband is so involved. Thank you. Yes, taking all my STD tests for syphilis is important to both of us. My prenatal promise is to prevent a stillbirth or miscarriage. To find out more, visit myprenatalpromise.com. This pandemic has impacted the lives of many people living with underlying health conditions, such as asthma and diabetes. That's why avoiding COVID-19 is a top priority, and a vaccine will help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Please keep masking up and practicing social distancing to protect those close to you. And be ready to take your best shot when a vaccine is available. Protect yourself to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Amazing things for you. Move up at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $3.19 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $3.99 a month. Both for 39 month lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 0.9% APR for 72 months plus bonus cash. Gulf Freeway just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac.com. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, family, thanks so much for coming back. We're talking to Mr. T. Sean Shannon. Hey, buddy, we were talking about a lot about how what you uh, have been learning along the way. A lot of people have asked the question, I was looking at some of the questions. And there's a lot of people that want to know in writing films, what should they do? How can they get started? There are a lot of people that are playwrights. You know, they've written plays or they've done something like that. But they're ready to go into doing maybe little short films or something. They're here in Houston. And the first thing people say is, you got to move. You got to go somewhere. Not anymore. Right. I don't, I don't think, I don't. I don't think you, uh, eventually you will have to go there to get things going, but to, you would, I think you want to show up in LA or New York with a product right? that people are already talking about or get ready to start from the bottom and start, you know, put your legwork in. If you go to LA and you're ready to do, uh, but it would be easier probably if you work here and writing, 
writing films is hard. Writing writing anything is hard. Right. But I but I enjoy it. I mean, people always like, yeah, writing's hard, and it's like, yeah, it is. It's it's not a lot of glamour there. Your typewriter by yourself. It's right. Not a lot of fun. Uh huh. But it, it, you got to do the work. And you and have to have discipline the, doing that yourself because you have to be, you, you have to have discipline, turn off the TV yeah. or turn on the music or whatever and get in your mode. And, you know, you got to definitely do that and you got to be disciplined and you got to motivate yourself. Yes. And then you hit on it and I never thought to bring it up. Music is so important to me writing and uh, it just, it's, it, it fills up space that so you can think in another space. Right. Right. But music to me is a big key to writing. And I have, uh, like when I think of my years at Saturday night live, I, I think of albums yeah. that got me years. Like there was a Lou Reed album, New York, which was my favorite writing album for at least <laughs> two years. And it was just Lou Reed and just, two guitars, bass and drum. Yeah. And it, it really put me in a zone, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then also you, here's the, here's the tough part. Here's the two tough parts about writing, rewriting. You gotta rewrite. Like, like, especially when you get a movie, uh -huh. when you write a movie, it's a hundred pages and it's yes. like, oh, uh, and then, and then there's the pixie sticks game. If you pull one scene out, suddenly these four other scenes crumple. Yes. And so, and it's, that's the hardest thing I think is to go back and to rewrite. Like mm -hmm. the, it's not a fun thing to know that when you're done with your hundred, hundred page screenplay, <laughs> you're not done. Right. Wow. That's step one. We got five more to go. Right. You, one of them. And so rewriting is a big key. I mean, and then also you got to move on to the next project. Mm -hmm. Like, and I always, I always read writing books or mm -hmm. anytime like writers talking about, but Stephen King, what he would do is he writes every day uh -huh. and then he would, um, he would finish a book, start a new one. And when he finished the second one, he would go back and rewrite the first book because right. it gave him lies and also he's a better writer by the time he's written another book and that's the same thing with screenplays you write one screenplay yes that's great and you rewrite it then do your second one and you're going to learn stuff during that second one just right. doing it and then when you go back to that first one you're going to see stuff and go oh this is what i could do here absolutely and and it's it's a it's a long process and it's uh it's yeah it's just a lot of work you got to do it and if that's what you want to do it's it's not really work and you haven't been able to, I, many times you've had to you can't go to you know can't go to the club you can't go out you got to you have a deadline you have a deadline yeah you have a deadline and and a lot of and it, when you start it's self imposed yes yes and yes yes you can't go you can go out to the club, but then you got to do your work during the day. Right. You know, you have to do, you have to do your work. You have That's to do your work. Big... You have to do your yeah. work. You, you really do. You have to do it. And then like you were saying, I love what you said about networking. You have to network with others because most of the jobs come by that. It's all in who you know. It really is. It's like, Hey, yeah. And then that helped me so much on my first show is that right. these guys could do gigs and they would go, Hey, the, you should talk to this guy. Right. And that's such a big key. And it's uh part of it is you got to score when you do get your chance. Yes. Yes. Luck yes, yes. is up he meets preparation. So uh -huh. you gotta be, you gotta be ready to go when it happens. Now that's true. That's true. And investing in yourself. Many people don't want to invest in themselves. Yeah, that's true. You gotta, you gotta invest in yourself. And even if it's, and that doesn't mean you have to wear a suit, but you should wear something that you're comfortable in that looks yes. nice. <laughs> you, you should, <laughs> that's, that's the key. That's the key. That's the key right there. Comfortable yeah. and look nice. And yeah. looking at it, and we were talking about uh, just the career and all that you've done. And then now the great part about it, 
You don't have to always be on the big screen. I love the part about Amazon Prime, your Netflix, your Lifetimes or whatever. How do we go from that? How do we get that that part? How do we go there? Well, this is this is the same thing that I experienced when I first started. Yeah. In the 80s, late 80s, early 90s is cable was blowing up. Yes. So we got USA Network, you got Comedy Network, you got Country Music Network. You have all these different avenues now. And now you're getting them in streaming services. Mm -hmm. And they're blowing up and it's like Netflix and Amazon. And then there's these other ones coming up too. And those are going to be the ones you want to try to hit or figure out how to get into. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that can like always be looking to where things are going, not where they are. Absolutely. Does that make sense? It does. It does. What would you like to leave with the viewers, my friend? Um, <laughs> I've got nothing. Hey, there's a <laughs> painting of a bear. No, that's uh, there's a painting of a bear and a sexy outfit. Oh, I got and that also, going. also his Emmy is back there. He is an Emmy award winning writer. For Saturday Night Live, just not a Saturday Night Live writer, Emmy Award winning writer. <laughs> yes, that is hilarious. <laughs> That's too funny. How can people get your books? Uh, my, or they can't. Uh, or they my can't. website. Your website. Yeah, <laughs> you got to get your website. Way. They want to contact yeah. you. Tell us about your website. It's. I just started it, and it's just <laughs> two pages. And I haven't, I've been lazy and I haven't That's done okay. it. That's okay. No worries. But, no worries. Mr. T. Sean Shannon, I appreciate yeah. you so much, buddy. Please come out to the show next weekend. Yes, uh, let's talk if, about that. Your upcoming event is going to be at Phil and Derek's. Yeah. Great yeah. bar. Yeah. And I'm playing with Thea Vidal, who is yes. another Houston uh, comedian. Really mm -hmm. funny lady. It's going to be a really good show. She is super funny. I'm funny. She's super funny at stand up. Yes. She's incredible. And yeah. uh, I would encourage people to come out to the show because it's it's going to be a really good show. And it's like the boot of COVID is our off our neck now. So <laughs> it's good to be out in a crowd again. Absolutely. We're vaccinated, right? <laughs> vaccinated. I got it. <laughs> So April 23rd and 24th of next week, that will be yes. at Phil and Derek's. You will be live there. There you go. Yep. There you Speak. go. Phil and Derek's. Wow. Yeah, at Comedy Lounge, Speak Easy, Theo Vidal, and T. Sean Shannon will be there. Aldi Freeman. My buddy Al D. Freeman's going to be there, too. Yeah, Al D. Freeman. He is the host. Your buddy will be there. That's how we hooked up. Al D. Yes. That's how we hooked He's up. He's a good Good guy. Good guy. I appreciate you, really? buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Cam. I really appreciate it. So Talk good to seeing you. Talk to you soon. God bless. All right. Hey, 1231, 30 Central Standard Time, the Cam Hill Show. Talk to you. Bye.